Yo, what's going on everyone? Uh, so, I am currently traveling, so apologies for the scuffed setup, but uh, RuneScape dropped a news post a couple days ago about coming changes to the Fresh Start Worlds, so what I thought we would do today is kind of just take a quick look through it and I will give my thoughts. So, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna give it a read here, um, bits and pieces, it'll be on screen as well, I'm sure. And, uh, yeah, I thought we would uh, go through it because I've got a lot of thoughts on it and I'd love to hear what you guys think about it as well because, I don't know, I think it's been a really interesting kind of contentious thing that people have been discussing and, and talking about a lot and I just kind of wanted to continue the dialogue because I'm certainly, you know, not done trying to give feedback and I think it's really important that you guys have an opportunity to make your voices heard as well. This thing starts off by saying, Hey Scapers, thank you so much for your feedback. We really appreciate your insight as we embark on a new concept for RuneScape. We want to give you an update on where we're at with development and some of the changes we're making. We heard your comments and we'll be using them to shape Fresh Start Worlds as we work towards the release. Uh, so first thing they're doing is they're delaying the launch to September 26th, 2022, so they're pushing it back by two weeks. I think that's good. I think if it takes an extra couple weeks and that means they can implement more changes and make it closer to what the community wants, that's never a bad thing. I would much rather something come out later and more polished than, you know, meeting a release deadline and coming out really scoffed and needing to be changed in the future. Uh, first part of the news post reads, Why Fresh Start Worlds? Uh, for new players, joining a game that's been running for over two decades can be a daunting prospect. We also know that returning players can feel overwhelmed by the speed at which RuneScape has grown in their absence because it has such a passionate and innovative community. Swinging with both these groups, they've expressed a significant interest in playing on a fresh start world, an environment where everyone is on equal terms, rediscovery can happen alongside other players where they don't feel 21 years behind the curve. And I saw on Twitter some people were kind of <laughs> roasting this entire, this entire paragraph, and I don't necessarily disagree. I think it's probably more PR jargon than anything else. Um, but I think anyone who, who plays RuneScape knows that if you start playing RuneScape now, you're not 21 years behind the curve because every content or every single piece of content from probably even anything further back than five years ago or four years ago or even three years ago is pretty much phased out. Um, so although the game is different, I think saying that we need fresh start worlds because there's 21 years of, of content and it's really overwhelming because they need to catch up to all of it, uh, I don't think is, is completely correct, but not a big deal. We want to bring new and returning players together in one focused moment to reignite that magical feeling of starting out on a new adventure as a community. We want them to have a fun and rewarding experience as they work towards rejoining the current game. That's why we're including XP bonuses, boons, and rewards to make the experience that stands out and rewards players in equal measure. When those new and returning players are done with Fresh Start Worlds, they can seamlessly continue their adventure with the rest of us in the main game, keeping their characters' progress and rewards. If we want those players to stay in Gilinor for the long haul, saving their progress in this game mode is integral to that, aspect that has been a core foundation of our design from the get-go. So this is good, and I think it would have been good to put this in the original news post to say this is for new players, lapsed players only. Um, one thing I will say, though, is they've mentioned a couple times, they also mentioned on the live stream that they did research speaking with lapsed players, which is a player that doesn't play the game anymore. And they're saying that upon, you know, their extensive research, that lapsed players would prefer to make a new account and restart than to play on the account that they already have that they're not actively playing. And I find that interesting, and not to be, like, overly skeptical here, but I know, you know, if I were a lapsed player, because I was one, let's say, six, seven years ago, um, I certainly wasn't considering restarting compared to playing on the account that I'd, you know, already been playing on for a significant amount of time. Um, so anyway, I, I still think that's interesting to me, and I'm not going to say, like, I don't believe it, but I would love to get more insight into it, what research they did exactly to, to reach that conclusion, because that's not what I would have thought the, uh, you know, the, the community of, of lapsed players or people that aren't actively playing anymore, um, you know, would have wanted. So anyway, interesting. Uh, now onto the important stuff. It's coming changes. So, while Fresh Start Worlds are mostly focused on attracting returning players, we knew there would be current adventurers who'd be interested in firing up new characters too, whether to race, make a new alt, or simply nab some great rewards. For this reason, your feedback as active players is an important part of the process. So, yeah, this I think is, is a really big one where I think a lot of the outrage on Fresh Start Worlds was... It, they, people made it pretty clear, and I mean, there was a comment from, from Mod Jack from Discord that was kind of taken out of, out of context, but even in Mod Jack's sort of apology for that comment, um, there wasn't really any real acknowledgement that Fresh Start Worlds, although they're designed for new players, um, are going to have a significant impact on existing players, and that existing players' opinion should be valued and should be important and should be kind of a part of the decision. So I think that's really, you know, good to include at this point that yeah, of course it's important for existing players, and as it should be, it impacts them. 
Um, and I certainly felt like those comments from Ajak were a little dismissive of, of the existing community, and I totally understood why people were upset by them, and I was too. The first thing they're doing is new membership passcode via bonds. We are developing a way to allow RuneScape bonds to be redeemed for a new 14-day membership passcode, ready for launch on September 26th, so that existing players can use their bonds to get membership on a new Fresh Start World account. So, that's really good. I think... It's definitely a start. I know a lot of players, their biggest gripe with Fresh Start Worlds was, I really need to pay 12 bucks, 13 bucks, whatever it is a month on a brand new account. And I know for a lot of players, are, they're still going to be upset because they feel like, if I'm an existing player to play this limited timeout, I should just be able to use my own account. And I would agree with that. I think if it's for both existing players and lapsed players, if the lapsed player wants to make a new account, cool. And for the new players, I, I still think it would be better if they didn't need to make a, make a whole new account. But this definitely alleviates that a little bit. I know for a lot of players, being able to get a bond on your main account or afford one or make money for one, um, it certainly does make it you know, a lot more accessible um, for that specific player base. So anyway, I think it's a step in the right direction, although not you know, ideal for a lot of people, I'm sure. Um, the next section I think is really important, and it's called Concerns About Game Integrity. I think one of the things that people didn't like about the Fresh Start Worlds is that it kind of felt like a bit of a, an insult to existing players to, you know, allow new players or to be able to create an ult with massively boosted XP rates and all of these boons and all these weapons that level up with you and extra drop rates. And it just, it kind of felt like it cheapened the live game experience a little bit where a lot of players who've been working really hard on their accounts would feel a little miffed that like, okay, so if I'd waited to start my account, I, you know, could have just played it during this and I would have had to grind half as much. And I think that's a really fair concern. I think you definitely need to <laughs> find the right balance, which I'm probably going to say a thousand times during this. Um, because if you don't, you're going to, you know, at the expense of your existing players, you're going to make something that's good for new players. Um, so first thing we're doing is the rebalancing week to week XP multiplier and reducing the peak XP multiplier, which I believe was 3x initially. So maybe it's going down to 2x. And they've said, um, Somewhere further down, I believe, they're starting the Fresh Start servers at 1.5x experience, which, yeah, seems a little better. Um, we've removed the boons of experience, which provided an instant level for any skill under 99. We've also removed the boon of skill pets, which provided a 100% chance for skill pet drops. Um, and they're also adding here that they're reviewing weekly effects, and they're going to keep people updated if there are going to be other changes made. Uh, it's clear there are some real concerns in the community on the impact Fresh Start Worlds could have on the value of your accomplishments and on the economy due to the XP and boons. Based on the extensive gameplay data available to us, we're confident that our original XP and boon balancing was well-tuned for how the vast majority will play. We're also certain that the mode cannot be abused to create disproportionate amounts of resources in the main game, especially considering the challenges of a reset economy. So I've seen this thrown around before too, which is that there's a 20% drop rate increase, but people probably won't be able to do a lot of endgame PVMing. And I think it actually stands up really, really well, but I would love to see a JMod comment on Croesus, because all of that rationale and mentality completely falls off uh, as soon as you start looking at Croesus, because people on release day with maybe five, six hours of gameplay, will be able to start doing Croesus and generating an absolute ton of GP just because of the nature of that boss and how it works where you can bring an absolutely crazy amount of players, you'll be able to level up really quickly and the way contribution works is in a 50 person mass, you can roll an absolutely nuts amount of drops and everybody gets drops. So I actually, I do agree for something like hard mode Carapac, it's not a huge deal to have a 20% drop rate increase. But uh, yeah, the big one for me is Croesus. And I'd love to see kind of a, a comment on that because an extra 20% drop rate at a boss like that, that's throwing in so much raw GP into the game. Yeah, it probably, you know, could actually have an impact on the economy. Also, they say after that, that this is an experiment for all of us. Part of that is properly considering your feedback as existing scapers. Based on those concerns, we've toned down some areas we feel can be changed without compromising the appeal of the mode for most returning players. So, I mean, overall, these are good changes. I said, I think I said it on Twitter, I might have said it in a video, that I wanted to see some of the XP boons and some of the overpowered things toned down a little bit because they didn't feel absolutely necessary. And yeah, to me, I think this is a, a good change to see, but obviously there's still more to, to look at and more to unpack. Uh, next up, we're going to look at reward availability. Um, they say, we are committed to ensuring the majority of items on Fresh Start Worlds are available again in the future. Iron Man accounts in the main game will still be able to receive rewards from Fresh Start Worlds. 
In our rush to create some great rewards, we inadvertently turn the Fresh Start World's experience from a take part if this appeals to you alternative game mode into I feel compelled to play this situation for some active players. To put you at ease, we want to state clearly that this will not be your only opportunity to acquire these rewards. While we don't have specifics today, we hope this removes the pressure to take part if you decide the experience itself isn't for you. I don't know about you guys, but I don't really feel at ease at all reading that because it's not specific at all. I think the main, you know, things that were kind of, I would say, a little predatory about the Fresh Start Worlds were these inverted 99 and 120 capes that transferred over to the main game that a lot of players would have wanted to get in this four-month Fresh Start period. Combine, you know, that time crunch with Treasure Hunter being enabled, and you can end up with an issue where towards the end of it, people realize, I'm going to run out of time. So either I'm going to get out of these Fresh Start Worlds with nothing, or I'm going to buy bonds, treasure into keys, whatever else, to try and spin my way to get this done. And I found that personally very predatory. I, I've talked about that before. I have a, a background in psychology and gambling addiction and all that stuff. And I don't really feel terribly at ease reading this because although they're saying the majority of items from Fresh Start Worlds are going to be available again in the future, it's just not specific at all. Because for example, I would feel great about it. And you know, as a, you know, this is way less predatory. There's a lot less FOMO here, which is fear of missing out. If, for example, they said these 120 capes are going to be offered after the completion of a quest, or maybe it'll be if you reach 200 mil in a skill, you can recolor your, your 120 cape. And the same with the, the 99 capes. If they actually stated how they're going to be available in game in the future, I think that would make a really big difference. Because right now, myself and a lot of others are thinking, yeah, okay, it's good that they're not going to be exclusive, but what if they end up on the treasure hunter? for example, as a like super rare green Santa hat-esque promo where you can earn, earn, you know, a, uh, a recolor for a 120 cape on Treasure Hunter, because that wouldn't help at all. So I think moving forward and before these come out, it's going to be really important. They need to be specific. This is what the reward is. This is how we're planning on releasing it in the actual game. Get it in writing. And I think if they don't do that, I don't think this is really going to ease the minds of, of RuneScape players, because... I mean, how could it? You, you would only really be at ease if you can really trust that it's going to be put in the game in a way that's attainable, fair, fun, everything else. And I personally, you know, I don't necessarily have the trust that that's going to happen. Next thing here is limiting bonds in the competitive period. It says each account can only buy or sell a maximum of one bond per weekly reset in the competitive period, which is weeks one to eight. Bonds hold a special place in our hearts as a means to get everything you could buy for real life money through your gameplay. This is something we really feel is important to preserve for the Fresh Start World's experience. However, we've heard your concerns raised about potential pay-to-win snares that could emerge from players selling bonds in the race to world first. It's also important to us that the competition itself is as fair as possible. To make sure we balance, balance both perspectives, we've decided to limit accounts to one bond purchase or sale per week. This prevents players from buying meaningful advantage during the competition, but still allows for players to acquire bonds and fund their membership via gameplay. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I still feel like a true competition would be better without bonds. This definitely helps. It isn't going to prevent whaling because people are going to bond alts or do drop trading or anything else. But I mean, that also fits into the argument of swapping. Because if they remove bonds entirely, people would just swap uh, to get an advantage if they wanted to. So, so with that in mind, I think it's a positive change just because it makes it less easy to buy a crazy amount of bonds. And, it, you know, it gives you more hurdles to jump through. But the truth is, if they wanted a true competition, they would do what old school leagues do and make an Iron Man only. And that just doesn't seem to be kind of what the goal is for this update. So overall, I feel like that aspect of it is is a little bit better. And yeah, that's basically it. They're also saying that they're, they're changing the release date. Um, I don't know how I feel about this. I think a lot of the things that players asked for are kind of commented on a little bit. They've seemed to make... They, they seem to be making some concessions here and there um, where, you know, they're making it a little less pay to win. They're, you know, making some changes to make the XP rates a little less overpowered to make existing players maybe not feel quite as, you know, unheard or, or devalued in terms of their own accomplishments and achievements in the live game. Uh, at the same time, I still think Fresh Start servers or Fresh Start Worlds have a lot of issues. I think making a new account is a huge negative for a lot of players. And what are all these existing players going to do with their random alts at the end of the four months as well? It just still doesn't seem like a great idea. It doesn't seem close to perfect for me. But I would say this news post is a step in the right direction. And I would guess if kind of these details had been ironed out in advance of last week's announcement, uh, I think the reception would have been a whole lot better. So anyway, uh, we'll keep following. I'll probably, you know, I don't want to be a drama channel. I don't want to be making a video like this every day, but I'll keep you guys posted um, as sort of changes are announced or whatever else, and we can weigh in here. Most importantly, I would love to hear what you guys think about it. 
Um, so far, I'm really not sure if I'm going to play them, and I'm kind of leaning towards not playing them at this point, but uh, depending on what happens in the next few weeks with regard to being a little more transparent, giving more details and more specific information, um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have to see what happens. Either way, thank you all so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. You can leave a like and sub and all that stuff if you want to. Uh, once again, I'm sorry for the worst setup on planet Earth, and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have to catch you in the next one.